combined with all of the double cups. Yes. Live it, John. Guys, my beloved arise. Was that the name of the hymn there? That was. The, the hymn tune is particularly well too. Thanks for that. Yes, it is. Hymn 377 is our open hymn.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Bless the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is in Greek, Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing the tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put, up, Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and he said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. We pointed a psalm today, Psalm 23, and we will read this in unison. This is in King James. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me by down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He 
Today's second lesson is a reading from the book of Revelation. I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cry out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Sing. Amen. Blessing and honor and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship Him day and night within His temple. And the ones and the one who is seated on the throne will show them. They will hunger no more and thirst. No more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorpion. For a lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Two times from Galilee, before
No matter how hard I would try, or how badly I would want to, there is no way I could be two places at the same time. So then one pig makes choices. But I found in my life that sometimes it's okay to only be in one place at a time. Because that means somebody else is in a position to step up and do something that I couldn't do at the moment. And that's okay too. That's kind of dele delegation. It's kind of stewardship of gifts. Because I'm not the only one on the planet that can do stuff. So that's kind of how I felt about Peter in this discussion today. Um, this, is, this is a Lazarus moment repeated. Except now it's outside of Jerusalem and outside of outside of town, outside of that region. I kind of feel bad for Tabitha Dorcas because it's the same person. So she's Tabitha here, she's Dorcas there, she's Tabitha here, she's Dorcas there. So, okay. The best part of that is that it's also an establishment of, of the call of the gospel to warn the Jews because her name fits in the Messiah. The same person. So she could be a believer in a Jewish name and live in in an area that had a multiracial background. Hmm. I could hear my mother coming on my door at home. Kathy, get up! Not quite raising the dead, but you're like me, there are some days that it was easier than others to get out of bed. Yeah. And that summons, when it was that commanding, I do in my heart of hearts, I need you to get up. <laughs> the alternative is my father coming in, grabbing his jeans, pulling them off of me, and taking a glass of ice water and going, ooh, Recalcitrant Kathy being what she is, she will take the first summons because the second one doesn't look good. That's the other issue. So, being deputized, I mean, that's kind of the way we look at the church as, as all of us being deputized by, by virtue of our baptism to, to hear the voice of the shepherd and to follow. And, and then God has sent us out into the world to do the work part. Or as my, my dear friend Susan said, you know you're going the right direction if you can still see the back of his head. And I keep that, I've told you that before, but I keep that in my own, my own head. As a, as a follower of sheep. And with that being deputized, I want to talk about briefly about the Reverend Dr. Sister Mary. Reverend Doctor, because she's she's a professed Dominican sister in the Catholic Church. Doctor, because she took her religion and psychology training at the Sorbonne in French. She was not a native French speaker. So she learned French and then she went and got her, her master's and her doctorate in France. She made me learn to not say Sarbonne, it's Sarbonne. Okay. Sister Mary Neal, Irish of heritage, funnier than. Six people. 
probably one of the smartest human beings I have ever met. <coughs> and why I bring her up today, you know, I, I asked her, should I call her, call her Mary or Sister Mary? Or she said, Mother Superior would be good. <laughs> I stole that line. People ask me, are you Reverend Kathy? Are you Baker Kathy? Are you Mother Kathy? I'm Kathy. Mother Superior suits you. That's and what's so important about Mary Neal to me is she was my spiritual director for four years at one of the darkest points of time for me emotionally and spiritually that I have ever been through. Um, the depression was real. The inability of even my mother coming back from the dead and summoning me saying, Kathy, get up, may have not have worked. Um, I, I just wanted nothing to do with much of anybody. That's what my priest friend Vanessa said, you need to meet Mary Neal. I'll make the introduction. And I'll let her know you're coming. And I had to pass a couple of tests that Mary set before me before she would allow me in uh, in her spiritual direction practice. I had to take um, I had to take the test for Enneagram to see was a one through nine. If any of you know about any of that, I'm a clever forty six. So you can look that up if you want. Then you've got the key Kathy. The other thing is is I was required to read a book. And then when I finished those two things, um, then she would see and that turned out to be one of the most wonderful relationships. God rest her soul, she just died a couple months ago. Uh, 62 years as a Roman Catholic sister, having entered the order at the age of 19. Um, it was her life. Um, and it was well and fully lived. When she had her 60th year jubilee as a as a sister four episcopal priest women sat in a row together i being one of them and three of my colleagues from this diocese we had all been clients of sister mary and grateful for her when she would not be so then we sat around afterwards the four of us in our little collars very much stand, standing out of this Catholic celebration. Ooh, look, there's four of those people here. We talked about her humor, her insight, her dignity, and her gentle handling of each of us. At which point one of the priests said to me, each of us came to her at a very low point in our lives. There was never a better shepherd. Which is why I think about her today. We have this notion that shepherding and sheep, and by the way, I did have a great uncle that owned a sheep ranch, and yes, I did meet some, some of the shepherds, the majority of whom were Basque. Um, from the Pyrenees area, Ordered France and Spain. And so I was wondering this week as I was reading the lessons exactly what's required for being a shepherd. The physical requirements of a shepherd who really has sheep herder things going on is they have to be very physically resilient. Uh, they have to be very, very, very observant of the, the, the space around them and the sheep that they're called to tend. They have to listen very carefully because if one or two of the sheep are in distress, that means that something's coming from the flock. So it, it's a kind of like being on call 24-7, 365, while you're not out pasturing at all. But, you know, for the, the late spring and in, into early fall, you're always on your hip point. Uh, you always have to be alert away from me. And he 
have to know what to do for the shapes of trouble. Can't figure that out? Which isn't a bad thing to talk about spiritual shepherds under the same understanding. They have to know when you're bleating out that they stand in and help. And I am relatively sure that there are people in the lives of every one of you, including the online friends, that have had a shepherd in your life. There's someone who held your hand and listened carefully and reacted with alertness and promptness and someone who held you close and let you know it was going to be all right, even when it was all wrong. I've had more than one. I won't go down the list because it seems like emotionally or spiritually I've been in trouble enough in this life where I've had to have a lot of shepherds over the course of time. And I'm grateful for each of those women and men who, who've, uh, who stepped up to that calling. But here's the other half of the picture. Chances are, even if you didn't know it, you have been the shepherd for somebody else. You've helped carry someone who's been having a terrible time. Somebody who's just come unhinged and, and it's just about as bad as it can get. It's one of those things where you walk in and just be present to somebody who thinks that everything has gone wrong. And life at that moment has tanked. Which means that you have been deputized into the same calling and ministry as Paul and his sister Mary and a host of others to be shepherds to one another especially to those outside of here. I serve the good shepherd as an under shepherd. Not because I'm a priest, because I was baptized into this church. And as the baptismal rites say, to see the good in all persons. Now some people try to make that harder than others. And that's part of the challenge. Because if it was easy, then everybody would be doing this. But it isn't. So I want you to hear the next time somebody totally appreciates something that you have done for him, for her, for them. And say to myself, Self, this is your calling. You, this day, have been a good shepherd. It's not all on Jesus, it's all on us. To listen, to watch, to be attentive. It helps people. I was a little shocked at listening to the end of Freakonomics podcast yesterday, listening to it get on a uh, car on the way home from, from something I was doing you and uh, Freakonomics Radio is, is about economics and they're talking about class double A colleges. But what was the important was the tagline. Okay, so that closes the podcast today and as I always say take care of yourselves. Oh, and someone else. It was over. I never heard that sign off. God is pleased. Because that sounded like what I wanted to talk about today. That the responsibility is on all of us to help all of us. 
The responsibility is on all of us and all of them. Not them as, okay, I'm going to rush in and fix things. But to be present to them when they're needed. And through that all, the important thing that Jesus talks about today in the gospel is my sheep know me, and they know my voice. As clearly as a mother holding a child and singing the lullaby, that voice sticks with them. The laughter of a family around the table, that hearing stays with us. A hand raised to help with the task will be remembered. So she, turn the tables, and be the good shepherds God has called us to be. If you need help, for the love of God, raise your hand, sheep. Somebody is out there to help. That is the nature. Join me in reciting the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God, the Father is all.
pray for you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one, as you and the Father are one. We pray for you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, Gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. The Lord, have mercy. They may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor. And for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger. Show forth your glory in all that you do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all who we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we have not the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the mercy on us and the forgiveness that we may delight in your will and follow your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing our hymn of praise. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, and be in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. you. We share that with one another as we come to
ups and downs. What an attitude. Where's that attitude? I know. <laughs> you're flying it over a higher level here. Well, so she told her sh chauffeur that she and Ted were staying home today. Um, Renee is in COVID quarantine, uh, having come in contact with somebody who COVID. So we were texting and emailing back and forth in the middle of the night about quarantine restrictions and requirements according to the state and according to the county. So. And that was all very interesting. <laughs> it was a helpful bit to be able to do that. Um, an update on Tom. Um, there have been a couple of times when we've actually sat him up in the chair, uh, but he's still suffering from, from the, uh, the effects of the aorta tear and the surgery and the stroke, and he's not knocking. Um, uh, and so, um, they're bringing him along slowly, and, and he may yet be in ICU for several more weeks. Um, and it's going to be a while before he can get anywhere near home. Um, and that's what his sister says. All of you that have raised your hand, you're going to have to put your feet on the ground and help because you will need it and support as well. So I'm hoping to set up, I, I've intentionally stayed away in that. Um, he's only allowed two visitors during the course of the day besides treatment team. And I've tried to leave that to his family to be present to him because I think that is urgent. But now I think our time has passed that they really need to lay eyes on him. And so I will make that an appointment with, through his, uh, his sister in law, uh, Jesse, and say, you know, it's time for the victory to come visit. What day can I go? Show up at the hospital, and I'll be able to give you an eyes on uh, report hopefully next Sunday. Is he allowed to have an ambulance? Yes, he is. Okay. And, and if I did not already do so, I'll send you the, uh, or I can look it up on my phone and give it to you again before you write it out for you before you leave. But it could be sent directly to the ICU unit he's been in. Okay. So that it goes through the hospital. And you can do the carrying bridge. Yes, you can get on carrying bridge and, and apply to and his sister will grant you entry and then you can keep track every day or two. She posts what she's seeing and hearing with Tom as she goes and visits him. What's that? That's saying? part of part I'm having a hard time to access her post, but you can send a simple card and you can choose a, a photo. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can send that. Besides keeping up with him, you can also send a message with his family. She, she sits and reads all the cards to him, and, and he's not in a position to respond, so don't panic. It's, you know, let's be really frank. It's hard for Tom not to talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he's not talking. You know there's something wrong. Yeah. Uh, so, so you know that. The struggle is, is, is on so many levels for him right now, and uh, plus kind of being cut off with all of the things that he's used to and what is familiar, yeah. which hospitalization really does. Uh, 
Um, so please keep them in your prayers. Continue. Um, it's a long haul yet. Uh, want to tell me about concert? Oh, uh, yeah. For those who I did not send a message to, uh, my choir is having a concert two Sundays from now. Not next Sunday, but the following Sunday. It will be at. Uh, very good news. God knows with all that's gone on in the last couple of weeks in the world, you know, we needed some. That uh, Brian and Vicki successfully delivered of a child, uh, a girl, uh, in his labor. Um, and if they stuck to their naming convention, which they told me, her name will be Elizabeth Faith. Faith, F-A-I-T-H. Faith, F -A -I -T -H. God, I was texting him for 48 hours. Well, <laughs> well, hey, you know, and I, I like Ruby's suggestion. Was she going to come to the church? Um, 13 or 11 months pregnant, we were going to baptize the baby in utero, you know? Um, of course, she was thinking the same thing because she was done. We are baptizing, family is coming. Uh, a couple of the people in the family party uh, are immunocompromised, so if you're not vaccinated and fully boosted, uh, yeah. we're going to send you back. Uh, not to say you can't be here, but and, and masks will be required. We're ready uh, all the way around. That's an absolute. And uh, we baptized the, uh, the baby uh, two weeks from today, and uh, I will confirm that with the family. And uh, if I have a and been back to him uh, since he sent me the, the, the she had, uh, had delivered and baby and mom were healthy and doing well. What about the other young lady? Yeah. I haven't there. seen her. You haven't seen her. No, no. They were here two, two different Sundays. Okay. And, and one Sunday then also I wasn't there. Right. Yeah. Um, so I have not seen anything else of them. I, you know, I offered and said, you know, uh -huh. if you want to do this, we can do it here. Uh -huh. 
And you've got till June 12th, period, right? <laughs> At least for me being the one. I don't need to be the one. Yes, sir. Right. She's starting to wave and you know, respond to people more. So it's just like, um, unfortunately, one of the uh, two additions, last week I had three people, now I got like five people on my, on my list. It started with Tom and then my sister in law, Annie, and then uh, uh, the other Tom, Tom Matt. Tom Matt from Cancer Diagnosis. Yeah. yeah. carrying these people. Yes, ma'am. And again, I want to mention that uh, a week from Friday, the 20th of this month, the Civic of Peace people are having their event on reparations. As you probably may be aware that there has been a bill introduced re repeatedly uh, for a number of years to uh, work on reparations in the Congress. And but now the latest way that being packaged or pushed is that we all encourage uh, our president to use an, an executive order to create a commission to study the idea of reparations. And so that's something that uh, various organizations are supporting. The Peace Group is supporting it, of course, and uh, Human Watch, one of them. Human Rights Watch. Human Rights Watch, ACLU, um, Move On, uh, and a number of organizations supporting that. So at our event on the 20th, Friday the 20th, in the community room at the Sharp Park Library that's downstairs, and you must, we really want you to wear a mask. There are many people who are feeling uncomfortable coming to that without a mask. But we're going to show you a couple of short videos, you know, like 14 minutes videos, just to kind of explain the, the lead up to this. We're going to give you some paperwork <coughs> on the history of relations in, in the United States. Um, anyway, so we're hoping that you can attend. It's a very timely event that this is happening now and this change in going through uh, executive order rather than exploring the whole process. This is not, there's no solutions already in place. This is just beginning to talk about it and come to some of ways that we can undo or repair the damage done by slavery. Thank you. And those actions and reparations have been supported at the highest levels of the Episcopal Church in the country. And statements have come out in the last year from the Executive Council, which includes the presiding bishop, um, that something needs to be taken care of. Yes, I was putting together this list of, of uh, examples of reparations of one form or another. And I was so proud to see the Episcopalian Church on, in several areas of the country uh, coming forward not only with apologies, but money. Yeah. The Episcopal Church had, had a lot of confessions to make uh, around its involvement with slavery and historically. Um, and it 
it's uh, part of our due to, to continue that work. Um, and ask Mr. Biden to be a good shepherd. Uh, other announcements and uh, things to share? Oh, uh, well, birthday anniversaries and celebrations. And by the way, congratulations to the Watsons as their son um, uh, had a reception and a party in Sacramento um, to, to celebrate his recent marriage. And uh, so, so we send along hugs and loves to the whole family. Then let us with gladness receive the offerings of our life and our labors to the Lord. Do you want to all sit first? I, 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 I read a, 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 a subtext to that. Oh, well, yeah, I really do. I love, I love the whole song. Okay. I don't know which part of Psalm 23 I cut out in the end. Okay. I was going to be perverted. I was going to go, not perverted at all.
stand-ins for our mothers, and the shepherds who have kept us on the good way. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, you are created and have your being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you, betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, you reconcile us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending kingdom. Serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, 
you don't do us the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom would you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And as our Savior taught us, so together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, glory forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us cease the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God, and you are the people of God. The table is set, all is ready. You are welcome.
of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forevermore. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Seven oh eight. Shep Savior like a shepherd. <laughs> Thank you. 